Hello guys, so welcome sa aking electronics lecture series Okay, ang objectives ng lecture series ko na to ay Unang-una sa ECE students So sa mga wala pang electronic subjects, pwede itong maging advanced study Para naman sa mga ECE students na currently naka-enroll ng mga electronic subjects Pwede itong maging reference or reviewer And then para naman sa non-ECE students Pwede junior high school, senior high school, or college student na merong electronic subjects, pwede rin itong maging reference and reviewer. Okay, so simulan na natin. Sa episode 2 na to, ang didiscuss natin, semiconductor theory. Isimulan natin ang semiconductor theory sa particles o pan-atom. So, ang atom, meron yan 3 particles. Ito yung electrons, protons, and neutrons. So, kung pag-uusapan natin ng charge, ang electrons, negatively charged particle. So, ito yung charge niya, negative 1.602 times 10 raised to negative 19 coulomb. Ang protons naman ang positively charged particle. Ang charge niya, positive, 1.602 times 10 raised to negative 19 coulomb. Ang neutrons, neutral charge or zero charge. In terms of mass naman, ang electrons, 9.11 times 10 raised to negative 31 kilograms or 0. 0.00055 Dalton. Ang protons naman, 1.67 times 10 raised to negative 27 kilograms, or kung sa Dalton, 1.007. Ang neutrons, ang mass niya, 1.67, times 10 raised to negative 27 kilograms, kung sa Dalton, 1.009 Dalton. So, kung mapapansin nyo, in terms of kilograms, parehas ang protons at neutrons. Pagdating naman sa Dalton, nagkaroon ng kaunting discrepancy. So, dahil lang yan sa pag-round up. Ang nakadiscover ng mga particles na to, ang electrons, si Joseph John Thomson in 1877. Ang protons naman, discovered by Ernest Rutherford in 1918. Ang neutrons, discovered by James Chadwick in 1932. And kung mapapansin natin dito, ang protons at neutrons, almost the same in terms of mass. Pero ang mass ng electrons, mas magaang yan kumpara sa protons and neutrons. Okay? So, kung susukatin natin ang isang proton, ang katumbas nito, 1,000, 836 electrons. Okay? And then, kung pag-uusapan natin ang mass ng atom, ang mass ng atom, i-add lang natin yung mass ng electron, mass ng proton, and mass ng neutron. And since ang mass ng electron, sobrang liit nyan kumpara sa dalawa, pwede na itong ineglect. So, ang mass ng atom, pwede i-approximate na mass ng proton plus mass ng neutron. Okay? And then, kung ang mass natin, i-express natin ng Dalton, okay, yung Dalton unit, DA or Dalton. Ang gagawin na lang natin dyan, bibilangin natin yung kung ilang protons at kung ilang neutrons meron yung atom. Okay? So, mass of atom is simply the number of protons plus the number of neutrons and the unit is in Dalton. Okay? Isa pang dapat natin tandaan, yung tinatawag na atomic number. Okay? So, ang atomic number, ito rin yung number of 
protons okay Bohr's model according to this Bohr's model atoms have a planetary type structure that consists of central nucleus surrounded by orbiting electrons so kagaya ng nakikita natin dito so yung pinakagitna ito yung nucleus ito ay positively charged nucleus nandyan yung mga particles na protons and then surrounding this nucleus meron tayong mga tinatawag na shell okay yung first shell natin ito yung K second ito yung L third ito yung M fourth ito naman yung N okay and so on and then for every shell meron tayong tinatawag na maximum electrons na pwedeng mag-orbit. Okay? So, ang formula, number of maximum electrons or Ne, equivalent to 2N squared. So, kung ilis daw natin yung mga shell, so, meron tayong K, L, M, N. And then, yung small N, ito yung 1 para sa K, 2 para sa L, 3 para sa M, 4 para sa N. Then, pag sunod natin yung NE, sa K, this is 2 times 1 squared, 2 electrons yung pwedeng mag-orbit sa K shell. Para naman sa L, 2 times 2 squared, 8. Para sa M, 2 times 3 squared, 18. And then, para sa N shell, 2 times 4 squared, 32. Okay, so ito yung mga electrons or maximum electrons na pwedeng mailagay sa bawat shell. Okay, so let us take this example. Example natin is copper. So, copper has an atomic number of 29. So, kung 29 ang atomic number, 29 din ang protons, at ang ipaplot natin or ilalagay natin sa mga orbits total of 29 electrons okay so simula natin simula natin sa K shell ang K shell pwede tayong maglagay dyan ng maximum of 2 electrons okay so yan ang symbol natin sa electrons E para sa electrons negative ibig sabihin niya negatively charged so, andito yung first orbit. Nagyan natin ng 2 electrons. Ayan. And then, followed by L shell. Ito naman, maximum of 8 electrons. So, pwede tayong magpa, maglagay ng 8 electrons. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then, meron tayong M shell. So, maximum of 18 electrons. So, etong tatlo, etong tatlong orbits, ang total electrons na pwede nating mailagay dyan is 28 na. Okay, so, etong third shell, 18 electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yan. Okay? So, 18. So, kailangan pa, na, pa rin natin itong last shell. Kasi yung kailangan natin, 29. So, 28 pa lang. And then, yung end shell, merong isang electron na lang yan. Okay? So, ito yung last electron. So, this is total of 29 electrons. Okay? And then, dito, tandaan na rin natin, meron tayong tinatawag na uh, last orbit. So, ito ang tinatawag nating last orbit. So, sa last orbit, may tawag din tayo sa mga electrons sa last orbit. Okay? So, ang last orbit, tinatawag nating valence orbit.
or minsan ang tawag natin valence shell. So, yung mga electrons sa valence orbit, tinatawag naman itong valence electron. Okay? Meron din tayong tinatawag na energy level. Okay? So, yung pinakamalapit sa nucleus, ito yung tinatawag nating innermost shell. Okay? So, in terms of energy level, ito yung with lowest energy level. And then, ito namang shell na pinakamalayo sa nucleus or yung outermost shell. Okay, ito naman yung with highest energy level. Okay. So, bakit Uh, highest, bakit lowest? So, kaya itong innermost shell, meron siyang lowest energy dahil mas malakas yung force of attraction na nanggagaling sa nucleus. So, mas malakas yung nag attract from the nucleus. Therefore, uh, mas mahina naman yung mga energy level ng electrons dito sa innermost shell. And then, para naman sa outermost shell, since mas malayo siya, sa nucleus so yung force of attraction ng nucleus mas mahina yung effect dito sa outermost shell therefore yung mga electrons sa outermost shell uh, meron siyang highest energy level so again valence electron is the electrons in the outermost shell or the outermost electrons so gaya ng nakikita nyo sa drawing Okay, meron tayong 1, 2, 3, 4 na orbit or shell. So, yung fourth shell, kung ano yung electrons doon, yun yung valence electron. And then, meron din tayong tinatawag na crystalline. So, it is formed by covalent bonding. So, by the way, covalent bonding is the sharing of electrons. So, let's say meron tayong mga silicon materials dito. Okay? And then, bawat silicon materials, meron niyang valence electron na uh, nagsishare or nagkaaroon ng sharing from one silicon to another. So, nagkaaroon ng sharing of electrons para magkaroon ng tinatawag na silicon crystal. Okay? So, ito yung example ng silicon crystal. Categories of materials naman tayo. So, pwedeng magkaroon tayo ng three categories of materials and this is according to its conductivity. So, kung paano sila mag-conduct ng electricity. So, meron tayong conductor, insulator, and semiconductor. So, i-differentiate natin itong tatlo. Una-una, gagamitin natin ng valence electron. Okay, conductor has 1 to 3 valence electron. Insulator has 5 to 8 valence electron. And for semiconductor, meron niyang eksaktong 4 valence electron. Okay, next is characteristic. So, yung mga conductor can easily conduct current. Yung insulator naman, do not conduct current. And ang semiconductor, the conductivity is in between of conductor and insulator. Next is yung tinatawag na temperature coefficient. Okay, ang conductor, it has positive temperature coefficient. So, ang ibig sabihin yan, pag sinabing temperature coefficient, kapag tumaas ang temperature, tataas din ang resistance. Okay? So, yan ang ibig sabihin ng PTC. And then, ang insulator, it has negative 
temperature coefficient. Ang semiconductor, ganun din. Negative temperature coefficient. So, ang ibig sabihin naman yan, okay, kapag tumaas ang temperature, yan, bababa naman ang resistance. Okay? So, yan ang ibig sabihin ng PTC. Ito sa PTC. And then, para naman sa NTC, ito naman. Okay? So, sulat ko rito, ibig sabihin ng PTC, ito ay positive. Temperature coefficient. Ang NTC naman, ito yung negative temperature coefficient. Okay, so next comparison in terms of examples. So, ang conductor, ang examples niyan, yung silver, copper, and gold. Insulator naman, ito yung mga rubber and plastic. For semiconductor naman, ang examples natin, GE, ito yung germanium, SI, ito yung silicon, GAS, ito naman yung gallium, arsenide. Next natin yung tinatawag na energy gap. Okay, sa conductor, ang energy gap between valence band and conduction band is zero. So, wala silang gap. Sa insulator, ito yung may biggest gap between valence band and conduction band. So, yung gap between valence band and conduction band, tinatawag din niyang forbidden band. Sa semiconductor, so, in between yung gap compared to conductor and insulator. So, ang gap ng semiconductor, ang energy gap niyan between valence band and conduction band is uh, moderate compared with insulator and conductor. In terms of numerical value, so ang energy gap is in terms of electron volt. Okay, so kapag conductor, ang energy gap approximately zero electron volt. Okay? Sa insulator naman, so ang energy gap approximately 5 electron volt. Sa semiconductor, ang energy gap approximately 1 electron volt. So, meaning, dito sa conductor, yung mga electrons sa valence band, mas madaling magiging conduction or mas madaling magiging kuryente. Dahil nga, ito lang yung kailangan nilang ma-overcome na energy almost zero. Kumbaga, no need for extra energy para yung mga electron sa valence band maging electricity. Sa insulator naman, yung mga electrons sa valence band kailangan ma-overcome yung energy gap na 5 electron volt. Itong 5 electron volt na to, mataas na value yan para maging kuryente or para maging electricity etong mga electron sa valence band. Kumbaga, hindi nila kakayanin na makapunta sa conduction band para maging electricity. Sa semiconductor naman, ang energy gap, approximately 1 electron volt. So, may possibility na etong mga electron sa valence band makarating sa conduction band para maging electricity. Okay. Take note natin that there are no free electrons at absolute zero temperature. So pag sinabi nating free electrons, ito rin yung kaninang uh, nababanggit na conduction band. So kung ano man yung mga electrons sa conduction band, ang tawag natin doon ay conduction electrons or free electrons. 
Okay, so zero free electrons at absolute zero temperature, which is zero Kelvin. Okay? So, ito yung illustration natin. So, ang first band, kung makikita nyo, meron tayong electrons dito. Second band or second shell, may electrons. Valence shell, ito na yung mga magiging electricity. So, from valence shell, so meron tayong valence band, ito yung mga valence electron. And then, pag na-overcome yung energy gap, yung mga electrons na to magiging conduction electrons or yung free electrons or ito na yung magiging electricity. Okay, so meron pa tayo ritong process of losing or gaining a valence electron. This is also known as ionization. So, paano ba nagiging free electrons yung mga electrons dito sa valence band? Paano siya magiging free electrons or conduction electron? Okay, through ionization. Ang simple illustration ng ionization ay application of the heat energy. So, kapag ang atom naka-absorb ng heat energy, yung mga valence electron magiging free electrons or yung tinatawag na conduction electrons o yung responsible sa pagkakaroon ng electricity. Next terminology, kapag yung heat energy, inalis natin yan, so ang mangyayari, yung mga free electrons, mabawasan niya ng energy at babalik yan sa pinanggalingan na holes. So by the way, no, kapag ang electrons, okay, Illustrate ko dito. Kapag itong mga electrons na to uh, naka-receive ng heat energy, ang tendency niyan, maging free electrons yan, pumunta sa conduction band. At yung may iwan niyang vacancy, ito yung tinatawag na vacancy of electrons. Ito yung tinatawag na hole. Okay? So, nagkakaroon ng tinatawag na electron-hole pair. So, during ionization, meron tayong electron-hole pair. Okay? Now, kung nagkaroon ng removal of heat energy, ang tendency niyan ay magkaroon ng recombination. It occurs when a conduction band electron loses energy and falls back into the hole in the valence band. So, dito sa slide na to, take note of the following terminologies. So, meron tayong tinatawag na free electrons, ionization, electron hole pair and the recombination. Okay, isa pa pala, ang recombination, it is responsible for uh, the creation of another energy. Okay? So, take note natin, during recombination, silicon and germanium dissipates heat energy. Okay? So, nangyayari yan kapag sa silicon at germanium during recombination, they dissipates heat energy. Yung isa naman, gallium arsenide during recombination dissipates light energy. Let us now compare the different semiconductor materials. Ito yung germanium, silicon, and gallium arsenide. Okay, pag sinabi natin germanium, ito yung most sensitive to temperature. Pag silicon naman, ito yung most abundant or most commonly used semiconductor material. Gallium arsenide, ito naman yung with fastest electron mobility or yung pinakamabilis mag-switch dito sa tatlo. 
In terms of energy gap, ang germanium meron niyang 0.67 electron volt. Ang silicon, ang energy gap, 1.1 electron volt. Ang gallium arsenide, meron niyang 1.43 electron volt. Meron din tayong parameter na tinatawag na forward voltage. Kapag germanium, 0.3 volt. Kapag silicon, ang forward voltage, 0.7 volt. And kapag gallium arsenide, ang forward voltage, 1.2 volt. So, magkaiba ang electron volt sa volt unit. So, alam naman natin, ang volt unit, ito yung voltage. Ang electron volt naman, ito yung unit ng energy. Next is application. Ang typical application ng germanium ay sa infrared sensor. Ang silicon naman, most commonly used in electronic switching. Ang gallium arsenide, ginagamit to sa LED or light emitting diode and also, ginagamit din yan sa mga fast switching application. Take note natin itong relative mobility of electrons. Ang symbol na gagamitin dito is mu. Ang unit ng mobility of electrons ay square centimeter per volt seconds. So for gallium arsenide, the electron mobility is 8,500. For silicon, 1,500. And for germanium, 3,900. So, kung i-compare natin yung bilis nilang mag-switch, ang gallium arsenide, kinukonsider na 5 times faster than silicon. So, i-compare nyo lang yung 1.5 and 8.5. So, yan yung tinatawag na 5 times faster. Okay? Kung i-compare naman natin ang gallium arsenide sa germanium, 2 times faster lang yan. Okay? 2 times faster than germanium. Okay? So, doping naman tayo. Doping is the intentional introduction of impurities into an intrinsic semiconductor for the purpose of modulating its electrical, optical, and structural properties. The dope material is referred to as intrinsic semiconductor. Okay, for example, meron tayong silicon, and then yung silicon, hahaluan natin ng ibang atom. So, itong B stands for boron. O kaya, yung silicon natin, Haluan natin ng SB. So, itong SB, ito yung antimony. So, ang mga impurities atom, dalawa yan. It's either trivalent or pentavalent. etong tetravalent, hindi naman to impurity. So, ang tawag natin sa mga tetravalent, ito yung pure. Okay? Ito yung pure silicon or intrinsic. Okay? Example nyan, silicon. So again, ha, take note natin, pag sinabi natin tetravalent, ito yung pure or intrinsic. Okay? And then, pag sinabi naman natin trivalent, this is also known as acceptor atoms. Mga examples dito, ito yung boron, Indium or Gallium. So, tandaan lang natin yung acronym na BIG. Okay? So, pentavalent naman, ito yung tinatawag ding donor atoms. So, examples natin dyan, Phosphorus, Arsenic, Antimony, and Bismuth. So, tatandaan lang natin yung acronym na PAAB. Okay? So, isa pang mga dapat nating tandaan dito, meron din yung mga valence electron. So, ang tetravalent, ang valence electron dyan, equivalent to 4. 
Ang trivalent, ang valence electron dyan, equivalent to 3. So, from the word, tri. Ang pentavalent naman, ang valence electron, equivalent to 5. Okay? So, from the word penta. Now, bakit siya tinawag na acceptor? Bakit tinawag na donor? Dahil sa uh, pagginamit na to sa doping or sa covalent bonding, dapat magkakaroon tayo ng 8 uh, shared electrons. So, para magkaroon ng shared 8 electrons, ang silicon, kapag hinalo natin sa trivalent, okay, so magiging 7 lang yan. Kulang. Kulang siya para maging 8 electrons or 8 shared electrons. Kasi yung 8 shared electrons, dun tayo magkakaroon ng stability pagdating sa covalent bonding. So, kaya kailangan 8. So, since kulang, kaya tinatawag tong acceptor. Then, kapag nagkaroon naman tayo ng doping with pentavalent, so, meron kang 4 electrons plus 5 electrons, meron kang 9 shared electrons. So, so sobra. Sobra ng isa kung pag-uusapan natin yung stability na 8 shared electrons lang. So, since sobra ng isa, kaya tinawag yung donor atom. Okay, so intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductor materials. Pag sinabi natin intrinsic, ito lang naman yung pure silicon material. Pag extrinsic naman, gaya ng na-define kanina during doping terminology, so ang doping nagpo-produce ng extrinsic material. Okay, so ito yung silicon plus trivalent, ang mapoproduce natin dyan, tatawagin natin P-type material. So, yung P stands for positive. And then, meron tayong silicon plus pentavalent impurity atom ang mapuproduce natin dyan, N-type material. N is negative. Okay? So, kung i-recall natin ang silicon, meron niyang 4 valence electron. Ang trivalent, meron niyang 3 valence electron. Okay? Then, dito naman, ang silicon, again, 4 valence electron plus pentavalent, 5 valence electron. So, yung 4 plus 5 valence electron, meron siyang 9 valence electron. So, mas maraming electrons to. Kaya, this is more negative. That's why, doon na-derive yung n-type. Dito naman, mas kaunti yung electrons kumpara dito sa n-type. So, kinonsider itong more positive. Kaya, doon na-derive yung P. Dito sa P-type, extrinsic. So, again, ang extrinsic natin, meron tayong P-type material and n-type material. Meron din tayong tinatawag na majority carrier and minority carrier. Sa P-type material, ang majority carrier ay holes. Sa N-type material, ang majority carrier tinatawag na electrons. Pagdating naman sa minority carrier, P-type, ang minority carrier, electrons. N-type, ang minority carrier, holes. So, itong tinatawag nating carrier, ito yung mga, uh, ito yung electricity. Okay? Ito yung kuryente. So, ang minority carrier, take note, napuproduce to due to thermal energy. So, this is thermally produced carrier. Pag pinagsama natin yung P-type at N-type material, makakaproduce tayo ng tinatawag na PN device or yung diode. Okay, so meron tayong semiconductor device dito na tinatawag na diode. At instant, ito yung structure ng PN device. Meron tayong tinatawag na P-region, N-region. Pag na-expose yan sa tinatawag nating room temperature, ano ba yung room temperature natin? 
na gagamitin dito sa electronics. So, ito yung 25 degree Celsius. Okay? Pag yung PN device na exposed sa room temperature, magkaaroon niya ng third region. Ito yung tinatawag na depletion region. Okay? So, ito yung tinatawag na depletion region. So, pangatlong region. Okay? Tinatawag din niyang junction. So, since sa pagitan ng P tsaka N, so, tinatawag yung PN junction. At yung PN junction, meron niyang barrier potential or voltage. Minsan, yan ang voltage. Minsan, tinatawag yung knee voltage or forward voltage. Okay? For germanium, this voltage is 0.3 volt. Silicon, 0.7 volt. Gallium arsenide, 1.2 volt. Okay? So, yan yung mga terminologies naman natin dito. Ngayong nakapag- Illustrate na tayo ng tinatawag na PN device or the diode. And take note ha, take note nga pala. Uh, this diode has two layers. Ito yung tinatawag na two layers. Two layers of semiconductor. Okay? Okay, so itong diode na na-produce natin, tandaan natin yung P-region, nandyan yung terminal na tinatawag, positive terminal. Okay, tinatawag yung positive terminal na anode, ang symbol na ginagamit, capital A. Dito naman sa N-region, ang terminal natin dyan negative. Okay, ang pangalan ng negative terminal ng diode, cathode. Pero ang symbol nyan, capital K. Sa baba, ito yung schematic symbol. So, triangle. Okay? So, yung wide end, yung tinatawag na wide end ng triangle, yun yung anode terminal. And then, yung bar dito, ayun naman yung cathode terminal. Sa physical appearance, cylindrical in shape yan, kulay itim, and then may silver lang na lining dito sa isang end. So, kung nasan yung silver lining, yun yung cathode terminal. And then, yung ibang side or yung kabilang side, yun naman ang anode terminal. And this is the end of episode 2 which is about semiconductor theory. So, ang next video natin, episode 3, the diode. So, mas magdi-discuss pa tayo ng mga parameters or mga details regarding the PN device which is also known as diode. Okay, so thank you for watching this video. Again, kung may natutunan kayo or nakatulong itong video lecture na to, so please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you!